Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for boxing news and views from around the internet. Deontay Wilder has taken aim at Joseph Parker in an interview, saying he's the weakest champion who was given a pass and is only looking to fight second-tier fighters. Wilder was on The Boxing Voice to discuss Anthony Joshua, who was potentially looking to wait up to two years before fighting Wilder. Parker came up during the conversation. So I'll get to uh, Deontay Wilder's detailed comments in a moment, then I'll break them down, because there are a few facts he got wrong, and in my view, there's a bit of revisionary history going on here, uh, especially where Wilder's own career is concerned. So if you're a Deontay Wilder fangirl, you may not like some of what's to come. So when asked about the prospect of setting up a Parker fight, Wilder responded, Man, Joseph running like he ain't never ran before, man. You can't even keep up with him. He's trying to fight all the second-tier fighters now. You know, the thing about it, I'm going to have to stop having these guys come to my fights. All these champions can't come to my fights because when they do, they get firsthand what I'm capable of doing. It's easy to see me on TV and stuff, but when I come in person, it's just my demeanor, my presence about myself. I'm real. I'm real. And what I say is real. I don't say things just to say it for the media, just to make myself look good or sound good. I say it because I really feel it. I'm the realest champion in this division. I keep saying it, man. I can't express it enough. And for Parker, come on, man. Parker ain't trying to fight nobody. They came. I don't even know why they came to my fight. I don't even know why. Because they had a big talk, good game. Oh, we want to fight the best. We're looking to fight you and all this. You ain't even heard these guys speak my name since, since I knocked him out. Because that's what I do, man. You know, Joseph Parker is the weakest champion in the division. He's the weakest champion and everybody knows it. We don't even hear about Parker. Everybody give him a pass. He needs time. He's a fucking champion. As a champion, you got a target on your back. When you have a target on your back, you must stay ready. You must be prepared and ready at all times. It ain't no babysitting when you're the champion. There ain't so such a thing as developing and giving time because when you become a champion, all that goes out the window. Now you have enough time as a contender to have time to build experience, to build your record, to build whatever you need to build as a contender. But once you become a champion, that all goes out the window, baby. That's when you must stay ready because there's always that hungry person that's looking up. There's always that little fish that want to take that shark out and do it any kind of way possible. So I don't want to hear the excuse they give Parker, oh, he needs time to develop and stuff like that. No, no, no. He is a champion. He's among the elite. You must stay ready. I just want the I just want the best. I want the best of the division. I want it so bad. I want it now. Since I'm the one ducking, since I'm the one that's being blamed for all these guys taking PEDs, here I am. I've called everybody out. I've called out all the champions. I've called out the ones that got undefeated, the top fighters. I ain't talking no Dillian White, Millers, and please don't mention no Briggs, all that stuff. These guys ain't going to give me no credibility. Stop it. I don't want to entertain it. I want the best. Those were Deontay Wilder's comments to the boxing voice. He went on to say if Joshua is the best, then that's who he wants to face. He'd still face Ortiz and even Povetkin if he comes back into position. You would have noted a few comments read Dillian White being in there, and I'll come to that soon, plus some other statements he had to say. But first, let's address some of the comments about Joseph Parker. Wow, some strong stuff in there. I mean, the weakest champion, apparently. I think where Joseph Parker is concerned, and this is going to be a little bit of a preamble here, uh, people love to have short memories and push their own agenda. Somehow everyone has forgotten the prime reason Parker was at the Wilder Washington fight was to support his good friend and fighter Izu Agono, who was fighting Dominic Brazil on the same card. Izu and Parker are trained by Kevin Barry, they've lived together, and were promoted by Duco events for a number of years together. Izu fought on several of Parker's undercards before he left Duco. It was about ten or twelve fights, something like that. It was the media and boxing channels that began pushing the line that Parker might jump into the ring and challenge Wilder after the fight. It was never confirmed by Duco or Parker that that was ever his intention to do that. So go back and look at some of the coverage if you feel you must. Parker said he was there to support Izu. That was his prime goal for being there. 
So I'll, I'll also quickly address something else from the Boxing Voice video that happened earlier that I haven't actually mentioned above, just because it's important in relation to some of Wilder's comments. So the host said at one point that Joseph Parker chose to fight Huey Fury instead of Deontay Wilder because of money. And that's just simply not true. It's like people seem to have amnesia over this stuff. Fury was made Parker's mandatory defense by the WBO in the week slash 10 days after the Ruiz Jr. fight in December. So at the time of the Wilder-Washington fight in February, he was due to face Fury in May. It had been scheduled originally for April 1st, but Fury mucked around signing the contract, so it was pushed back to May 6th. Fury then pulled out of the fight a couple of weeks before the fight date leaving Parker's promoters the choice of swallowing a massive financial loss or saving the May 6th date through a voluntary defense, which the WBO had allowed. So Deontay Wilder, you might recall, he did call Parker out. But at the same time, he had a mandatory defense in the form of Berman Stavern. And he said he was prepared to fight Parker, but not in May, in July. So Parker's camp took a voluntary against Razvan Kajanu in the end on May 6th. So Parker's training camp was not wasted and he could get paid and Duco didn't take a bath financially. They moved it to a smaller venue. They held the event that was his first official defense, Razvan Kajanu. And that was because Huey Fury pulled out. I mean, if people want to call it a duck, which some people have and loud and often, well, that's over to them. But I disagree. Remember, after Razvan Kajanu, Huey Fury was still Parker's mandatory challenger, and the WBO would not allow him to face anyone else, including for a unification bout. Including for a unification bout. That fight happened finally in September. So those are the facts. And to those who are saying I'm being a Joseph Parker apologist, no I'm not. I'm just inserting some facts into the equation. It would be good if others could actually do the same. I mean, for, for me, Parker hasn't ducked Wilder yet because he hasn't had the chance to. But to that point where Wilder says Parker stopped calling his name after the Washington fight, that is true. He did stop calling out Wilder. And why? Well, Parker and his team, they decided that they would start campaigning in the UK. That's what they started saying, and they stopped talking about Wilder. That is absolutely true. And the reason they started talking about the UK was because they considered it was the best option for Parker's career. At the time, I took some criticism from Parker fans because given all the previous Wilder talk, in my view, if he didn't face Deontay Wilder after Fury, then for me it was technically a duck. Others disagree with me, but it is what it is. Moving on. So let's address the comment. He's trying to fight all the second tier fighters now. That may well end up being the case. We just don't know. Parker's promoter Duke Events has publicly said fights like Kyotaro Fujimoto, Jili Zhang, Bryant Jennings, and Lucas Brown, they are all being considered for Parker's upcoming voluntary defense, which could end up being as early as December. Delian White is also in that mix, so is Alexander Povetkin from what we've been told, and he is definitely not second tier. A week ago, David Higgins said he hoped an opponent for Parker would be confirmed in about two weeks-ish, so we're already a week down on that. So Wilder's words potentially have some truth in them, but we just don't know who Parker is going to face yet. It could well be a lesser opponent that many of us would not like to see him face. I've said it in previous videos that while chasing the money is one thing and business makes sense da 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 da, da with dollars, Parker will take a reputational hit if he faces the likes of a Kyotaro Fujimoto who basically has no record to speak of, and was in fact knocked out by some Joseph Parker leftovers in the form of Solomon Homono. But Deontay Wilder has to be very careful with his words, because his five voluntary defences have been against second-tier opponents. No matter which way Wilder tries to cut it, he's faced guys people didn't want to see him fight, and he's been accused of cherry-picking fights and fighting bums his whole career. When Wilder says he wants to fight the best, I do like to hear that, because as a fan, I have no more leeway to give him. For me, it's big fights or bust. Wilder has used up all his credibility in fighting Spilka, Tuapa, Ariola, Molina, and Washington. 
So I'm not sure he's the best guy to be dishing out critiques on people fighting second tier opponents because he's made a career as a champion of voluntarily doing so and fans won't stand for it any longer. Sure, the Povetkin and now Ortiz situations are unfortunate with failed drug tests, but Wilder has had five opportunities to choose a top opponent. He has not done so. That's indisputable. If anything, it's a cautionary tale, and someone like Joseph Parker should take heed before signing similar beatable opponents. It can really hurt your image and stock in the division. It's the reason I believe Joshua doesn't want to fight Wilder next, Deontay Wilder does not have as much marketability to the masses without a Luis Ortiz on his resume, a name, a signature win. So Ortiz really screwed everyone over with his failed drug test. But are people giving Parker a pass, as Wilder puts it? A pass on what? He hasn't had the chance to do anything yet because he's been tied up with Huey Fury for 10 months. I'll agree with that sentiment if Parker starts fighting bum after bum. But it is really interesting the narrative Wilder wants to paint here because he seemingly is trying to put Joseph Parker in the positions that fans have put Wilder in. And Wilder is now talking ad nauseum about being the realist champion and calling everyone out. I mean, for me, there's a bit of revisionary history going on there. This whole call out thing, this has been a more recent thing this year. I would note most of the guys that he has been calling out have been tied up with fights. Or they've said yes to a Wilder fight, but Wilder doesn't want to know, even at short notice. Remember, Luis Ortiz said in, was it January when Andres Wurija tested dirty for Peds, that he would fight Wilder on a couple of weeks' notice. Wilder didn't want a bar of it. But then all of a sudden, later on, he did. I'm sorry, Deontay Wilder. You don't get credit for calling people out. You get credit for fighting them. If your people are so inept at securing opponents, then fire them. They are part of the reason that the fans rag on your career. And I'll say it again, voluntary defences against Spilka, Molina, Areola, Duopa and Washington. Enough said. I'm not even sure why Wilder keeps attacking fans for having a go at his record. It actually is what it is. And arguably, Parker's opposition is just as good. At only 24 fights. Maybe even better, some would argue. At least he has stepped into fights that people thought were 50-50 fights. Takam, Ruiz, Fury. So as for being the weakest champion, now that's one thing for fans to say that. But for Wilder, it's very interesting indeed. I mean, especially given Stavern is the best name on his record after 38 fights. I certainly agree Parker would have uh, the lowest profile out of the champions, but that comes from the fact he's been fighting out of New Zealand for most of his career. Wilder has been fighting in the United States, the former mecca of boxing. What's, what's he been doing for the past nine years? He is not a massive star. And I'm not even sure that Joseph Parker is the weakest champion. That's a very subjective thing. I would say that a Wilder-Parker fight is a, is a 50-50 proposition. And I think Parker would be far and away the best opponent that Wilder would have ever faced. But it makes sense for Wilder to position Parker as the weakest champion and hit out at Parker because it deflects attention away from his record and the fact we're about to see another wilder Stavern fight. One the public did not want to see. Another meaningless opponent for Deontay Wilder and another meaningless name for his record. I do agree with Wilder that a champion should fight the best, stay ready and be ready. But it's a pity he hasn't followed his own advice. I mean, people in glass houses and all that. I mean, that's why I say it's a truly cautionary tale for Joseph Parker. Chasing the money in Asia against second tier opponents, it will have its downside with fans. Some will start to label him the new Deontay Wilder. It's also interesting that Wilder won't entertain a fight with Jarrell Miller or Dillian White, saying they are second tier. He would get some credit, but he's, he's probably right. It kind of is big fight or bust for him now. So in terms of White, he also said in the same interview that people basically want to see the comparison between him knocking White out and AJ knocking White out, and who does it faster so they can compare the two. Actually, that's true. That would happen. That would you know just happen because the same opposition. I don't 
understand why that's a reason not to fight White, though, especially with a massive offer that he's had. But let's, um, he did actually also say, let's face it, let's be real. Dillian White is going to be the same caliber as these guys have already fought. I already know what's going to be said. I already know. So why waste my time with the Dillian White? I want the guy that knocked Dillian White out. That's who I want. He does make a good point. It would be good to see Wilder and Joshua. But in terms of uh, Eddie Hearn setting that fight up, because Joshua is very clearly the A-side, Deontay Wilder firmly the B-side. Hearn is not going to make that money unless it makes mega money. I'm not sure it does make mega money right now. It would be a huge fight right now regardless. But he wants to really turn this into an epic money spinner. And that would have happened next if Wilder had Ortiz on his record. He does not. And the fact that Team Wilder has uh, no signature win after nine years, well, actually, that's Team Wilder's fault. No one else's. What do you make of this whole thing? Drop a comment. I'm sure there's going to be some uh, very firm views on this one. So drop a comment loud and often. Follow me on Twitter, boxing underscore squared. I'm out.